Subscribers to the channel may have noticed I've been slow in reviewing flashlights a bit, but that's because I've been really selective in what I review here recently and taken some time off. When I saw that Ace Beam announced the E75 though, I knew this was something I was interested in, and let's just say I'm not disappointed. The size, which is pretty reasonable in my hand, I feel like. The fact that it has quad LEDs and the Nisha 519A LED is an option, along with the UI here, has made this one a win in my book and probably is a very, very strong contender for flashlight of the year so far that I've reviewed in 2023. Thanks to Ace Beam for sending this one to me to review. Any sales or discounts that I have will be available in the description below, so make sure you check those out along with my social channels if you're not already following. Here is the packaging that the light comes in. It is a black box, nice, kind of elegant with the uh, white outline there, does the model. On the side, it tells you the color of the light and the LED option that you picked. And on the back, you've got some feature list there. It doesn't come with a whole lot in terms of accessories. You get a bag of two extra O-rings and a spare USB-C cover. It comes with the battery that's pre-installed. You get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable that's short. And you get a lanyard here that does say Ace Beam on it, but in otherwise is pretty generic. You additionally get the paperwork there of a warranty card and the manual as to be expected. So let's talk about the construction and design here. The uh, light is being offered in aluminum currently and anodized in four colors. You get a black, a gray, a blue, and a dark green. And I've got the dark green model here. Interestingly, the photo on Ace Beam's website doesn't really show a blue model, but it's got two shades of green instead is what I'd call them. The blue seems to be more of a teal if the photos on their website are accurate. I tried to get some clarification on that and really just didn't get anything solid from my ace beam person that I talked to. The light here itself has a flat tail and has a very very strong magnet inside of it. Um, you can easily hold it up on the side of a knife or a fridge or something like that which isn't always the case and I can wiggle it here pretty good and it doesn't come off. Some might argue that that's too strong um, but I, I like it. The uh, tail cap itself has some just straight knurls on it you do have your lanyard attachment point there. The threads are square cut. You can see the magnet in the tail cap there. It does rattle slightly when the tail cap is off. You could always put a little glue on there if that bothers you or something, but when it's all stuck together in a battery in there, it's not an issue. Here's the battery it comes with. Just a quick glance at that while I've got it open. You can see there is a spring down at the bottom there, so springs on both sides. The uh, body tube itself is integrated with the head. It's all one piece, so there's no union there or anything to come off. You've got that spiral fluting, which I like. It's not that aggressive though, so that's maybe one negative that I wish was a little bit better. You uh, do have four flats milled in there and then the pocket clip which we'll talk more about later. Um, there's very minimal markings on here which is something I like just Ace Beam E75 caution hot and the serial number and that's it. On the tail cap you've got a few things as well so I like that. The uh, e-switch here has a black aluminum button cover and uh, you've got a clear ring around here and when you turn the light on you get four LEDs and those LEDs give you your voltage indicators. They uh, stay on at all times when the light is on. They don't time out or they don't shut off and that's maybe something that's a little bit uh, disappointing or so. They do turn uh, red when there's 20% power remaining and they blink red when there is 10% power remaining. Uh, I've been told there's a revision with the LEDs here and they're going to be less bright in future production runs, but that is not the case on mine. They're fairly bright, especially when in moonlight mode here. The charging port here is opposite the button and it is pretty standard what you'd expect from a charging port. It seals well and is almost a little hard to grab. Uh, I had no problems with cables or anything in there and we'll talk about that later. The pocket clip is attached right below and we'll talk about that in a minute. The uh, front bezel here is black and uh, I'm guessing it's steel, but I don't have confirmation on that. You've got an anti-reflective coated glass lens down there and then your quad optic and your Nisha LEDs below that. The UI here is pretty simple. It's what I'm calling a standard flashlight UI. Many flashlight manufacturers use this type of UI so it's easy to easy to remember. From off you can long press and you get the moonlight mode. Pretty easy. Quick press will turn that off. If in moonlight mode if you uh, long if it's on and you long press it'll go up to low and then you can keep pressing um, to go up in your four major modes. Low, medium, medium, two, and high. You do have shortcuts um, when the light's on you can double click to turbo, triple click to strobe, 
and those shortcuts do work no matter if the light is on or off. There is memory on the normal modes too. There is lockout on here and all you have to do is press and hold the button for three seconds when the light is off and the same to unlock it. The light does have mechanical lockout and it's super simple. All you have to do is just break the seal ever so slightly on the tail cap and you're good to go here. It's a foolproof lockout method and you just can't get it wrong and you can't and nothing is faster to re-enable so retention here um, as i mentioned the lanyard attachment point on the back here is just this uh simple uh access here pretty standard across a lot of flashlights the uh, thing that's not necessarily standard is the pocket clip here it attaches right below that usb-c charging port there and it is a dual direction clip but it's just different and uh i would call it less than ideal in my opinion, because no matter how you put this, you're gonna have part of the light sticking up. It's not a deep carry clip by any means. So if your pocket goes in like this, uh, you're gonna have quite a bit of the head of the light sticking out for a heads up carry. And if you carry it like this, you're gonna have just that tail clip sticking out there, which isn't too bad. The dual direction clip does allow you to clip it to a hat or something, but this is a reasonably heavy flashlight, so it might not be something you wanna put on most hats. I just don't think it'd be very comfortable for very long, but it's possible to do in a heartbeat. There is no holster for this one, and for the size of the light, it's something that I'd like, and it's something that you get with some competitor's lights as well. So it's something I'd consider adding or using from other similar lights. The uh, holster from the Olight Seeker 3 Pro here works great. For size and weight, I measured the length of the E75 at 5.1 inches, the diameter of the head at 1.38, the diameter of the body at 1.04 on the flats, Weight with the clip and battery is 7.64 ounces or 216.7 grams. Slightly heavier than the e, than the uh, Olight Seeker 3 Pro at seven ounces or 198 grams. Here is a few comparisons with lights I have. So here is the Olight Seeker 3 Pro, which I reviewed a while back, but it, you can see it's a very similar sized light. I've got the Ace Beam E70, which I quite like. Length is basically identical, but it, this one is a little smaller diameter and obviously heavier with brass. I've got the Thrunite TC20 Pro here. Similar size light. This is a 26650, so it's a little fatter, bigger head. Ace Beam E70 Mini. This is 18650 style light, so it's going to be smaller all around, but gives you an idea. And the common Workos FC11, also an 18650 light and going to be smaller all around diameters and shorter. Let's talk about the LED and beam here. There is two LED options available. There's a cool white model that is brighter by about a thousand lumens and 6500 Kelvin. They don't specify exactly what LED there is. Or there's the Nisha 519 a option here that I've got here. It's about 4,500 Kelvin, uh, neutral white, and it's gonna be my favorite LED here. On my opal meter, I measured it at 4,701 Kelvin with a tint of 98 CRI. Both are excellent and my personal preference, and there's nothing negative to measure with DUV here. As you can see from the graph, it's, it's great. PWM was not found here either, as it's a constant current driver. The beam shape coming out of the quad LEDs isn't perfect. On my Nisha version, there's a few flower petals going on on the uh, spill at about five feet or so. You don't really notice these, but and it's not a big deal. What you do notice is that that spill's not round per se, but it certainly isn't a big fact. And I'd put this more as a floody style light with a just a little bit of a throw. At a distance, it's hard to tell what's throw and flood. It's uh, pretty uniform. So for my output charts here, it's really nice. I think that Ace Beam includes measurements for both LEDs. That's not something all manufacturers are doing these days. Moonlight through high, I saw the numbers were reasonably close to what Ace Beam claimed at the 30 second mark. And on turbo, my homemade lumen tube seems to be reading low above about 3000 lumens. It's something I'm gonna have to investigate a little bit further here. So I wouldn't read too deeply into those numbers. It's still quite bright and there is a difference between high and turbo that we'll, or we'll see in the night shots here. All right, today I am taking a look at the Ace Beam E75, and the model I've got here has the four Nisha 519A LEDs. It does have a moonlight mode of one lumen, but that never shows up on camera very well or is very exciting. So I've got it here on low, which is 30 lumens, and I measured it about 35 lumens on my lumen tube. You can really start to see the nice color rendering here, though. This is a very neutral LED, um, about 4,500 Kelvin, 96 CRI, really a nice tint. Bumping up here is medium one, 150 lumens. I measured it at 132. Let me adjust the camera here so we can see how this one throws. Here is that same medium 150 lumens or so. 
for having quad LEDs here, it throws decently well. It's a, it's a mix between flood and throw. We can kind of point up at the tree and you can kind of see that. Bumping up here is medium two. It's rated for 450 lumens. I measured it about 385. And this is a really useful distance and it gets quite a bit of runtime at this as well. Easily see to the neighbor's fence. It's not overpowering, but useful light. And here is high, it's rated for a thousand lumens. And I measured it at uh, 940, so pretty accurate. Again, you can see just wonderful coloring index, rendering index here. Very nice neutral tint. That's the beauty of this light is the wonderful LEDs that are in it and the easy user interface in my opinion. And here is turbo rated at 3000. I measured it about 2250 lumens, so a little less. Part of that might be my lumen tube, but you can see it reaches the end of the trees just fine here. For a lot of practical uses, this is gonna be more, way more light than you need. And it's got a reasonable runtime, although it does start to get warm in the hand when on turbo. So I just wanted to compare it to the Olight uh, Seeker 3 Pro. This is running Osram P9 LEDs, also a quad. This is in high mode, which is about 1200 lumens. And I'll compare it to the high mode on the uh, Ace Beam. So you can kind of see a comparison here that's pretty, pretty fair. Here is the Ace Beam. The Ace Beam is a broader beam, doesn't throw it quite as well as the Olight does. But the tint here is so much better. In my opinion, a little less power is worth the better tint by far. So there is the Olight, cool white, low CRI. And here is the Ace Beam E75 1000 lumens. The Ace Beam also has a strobe mode if that's your flavor. Run times here are mostly what I expected. You can see it turbo starts stepping down at the one minute mark over the next minute or so, coming down to around 1000 lumen. Heat peaks at the end of the first step down at an hour 33 at 54C, which is quite warm, but not uh, dangerous. Starting with turbo and running to exhaustion ends at four hours, 10 minutes, which is pretty solid. You get 93 minutes of runtime on high of 1,000 lumens. Skipping turbo and going straight to high doesn't yield much more, only about seven minutes on high and 18 more minutes on total runtime. Medium two lasted a total of seven hours of runtime, which is pretty good. And uh, the lack of the rubber grip isn't the biggest deal. It does mean you're a little more susceptible to the heat of the light though, versus like the Olight Seeker series, which has that rubber grip installed. But that's not really a big issue since you saw a peak at the 90 minute mark of continuous use of high. That's assuming you're not spamming turbo. So for recharging, the light uses on board USB-C here. As I mentioned before, there's the port and I had no issues with any of the cells or cables that I used and PD support was good. The included cell is a 5,000 milliamp hour, 15 amp cell. It is protected and button top. It's longer than standard, 57.29 uh, millimeters in length. I tested the battery from my E70 and it fit fine in there, but I've also got a, this is a button top uh, 21700. It's shorter if I show you here, then the uh, stock battery by a good amount there because it doesn't have a protection circuit and it works in the light without a problem. It even charges too. So there it is connected up and the light turns on, no big deal. Charging time in my test took three hours, 10 minutes from a low voltage protection at 3.009 volts to four full at 4.134 volts. And during this time, charging hit a maximum of two amps with a pretty substantial ramp down at the beginning of the two hour mark. One note on the terminal voltage there, that 4.134 volts is when the lights indicators here turn to green solid. If you leave it plugged in a little bit longer, it will trickle charge and get closer to that 4.2 cutoff. My conclusion on the E75 is that this is my favorite light of 2023 that I've tested so far. For me, the combination of the slightly warm, neutral, high CRI Nusha 519As here, the solid beam pattern, the 21700 battery providing a long runtime, and available in the green color, one of my favorite colors, makes it a win. It's got an easy UI without any negatives and no proxy sensor to mess with. And this is a form factor I like too. It fits well in my hand and isn't something I'm going to EDC, but that's okay. Not all flashlights need to be carried in your front pockets. The uh, clip on the E75 isn't my favorite by any means. Um, I just think it's a little awkward. It's very sturdy, which is good, but it's just not something I, I, I like. I might even end up taking it off here, although it doesn't get in the way 
and gives you a place to index, which isn't a bad thing. I don't like that it doesn't come with a holster. I think that'd be nice given the size of the light and the pocket clip, but that's kind of a personal opinion thing. I rarely put a holster on my belt anyways, so it's more just for protection of the light than I'm carrying it in the bag in my cases. You could also probably argue the price here is maybe a little high if you're comparing it to something like the uh, D4V2, which is a similar size and performance in LEDs. But if you're comparing it to like, say the Olight Seeker 3 Pro or Seeker 4, it's in line with the competition price-wise. So for me, the pros outweigh the cons here, and this ticks a lot of boxes for a general purpose flashlight, especially if you value high CRI, warm slash neutral tints like I do. It's easy for me to recommend the E75. I'd love to know what you guys think of this one. I bet a few of you guys have already ordered it or have one in your hands. I think it'll be popular with a lot of enthusiasts, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe so I catch you on the next review. Thanks for watching.